Hey YouTube, welcome to Rough Riders, thanks for stopping by. Back with another DIY video for you today. Today we're going to be doing a repack uh, on the wheel bearings on my trailers. Uh, I'm getting ready for a long trip across country. I'm actually taking both trailers with me this time. And uh, so in order to prep for that, I wanted to redo the uh, wheel bearings on uh, the trailers, repack them, and uh, get them ready. So um, let's take a look at the tools you need to get this job done and uh, we'll step through on how to do uh, a wheel, wheel bearing repack. Okay, to do this job, some paper towels. It's a very messy job, uh, as you'll see as we get into this thing, so lots of paper towels are gonna be really uh, handy. Uh, a board or a flat surface of some, si some sort, you're gonna need that to, to knock the seals back into place without uh, and getting them applying even, even pressure when you do that. Uh, some rubber gloves will be handy. Uh, brake cleaner uh, to get everything all cleaned up. Uh, high temperature grease. Uh, wheel bearing grease, a lug wrench to get the wheel off, a hammer, and a screwdriver uh, will will come in handy. A pair of pliers, a cotter pin, and then obviously uh, you know some yeah, a piece of cardboard or something to to be able to get some of the stuff done as as and to hold some of your trash while you're while you're doing all that. So okay, so uh, obviously in order to repack the wheel bearings, I got to get the wheels off. So while the trailer's still on the ground, I want to go ahead and loosen up all these lug nuts just like I would on a car. Tire off, I'm going to knock off the center cap, and you'll see why in just a minute why I'm doing that. Okay, so now I have access to the whole hub assembly here. The, there's two bearings sitting inside this hub. To get to that, I need to first knock off this uh, cap, so I'm just using a screwdriver. To knock it loose. A chisel would work here as well. Just like that. And there's the cap. Set that aside. And now what you can see here is I've got a cotter pin right here. And I don't want to use I don't want to reuse an old cotter pin. I want to replace that when I do this. Um, and then I've got a castle nut here which you can't really see, but let me uh, clean that up and show you. There's the old cotter pin out. And now what I've got is a castle nut sitting on here. I don't have a, a socket for this. Um, this is, I'm guessing, probably something like a 32 inch castle, or 30, 32 millimeter castle nut or something. Um, but it's not on there very tight at all. In fact, you can see this one is just a uh, twist off. There, you don't put a lot of torque on these things because otherwise it'll ruin the bearing. So if it is tightened down um, just a little bit, then what you could do is you could just knock it with your screwdriver, just knock it loose. But this one's not on there tight at all, so I can just spin this right off. And there's the castle nut. Now I can get this whole hub assembly off. Just like that. I got a washer. And there's my first bearing. And we're going to repack this with grease in just a minute. We're going to clean it up first. And then what you're going to see is on the back side, so this is the front side, on the back side there's a seal holding this in, and I got a new, and then there's a back side bearing, so I got to knock that out. So in order to do that, that's where I'm going to use my wheel. Pop that in there just like that, and I'm going to use my screwdriver and get behind the bearing to knock that seal out. And I'm just it, just lightly tapping it. I'm going behind the bearing, and let me see if I can give you a better image of this. Okay, so you can see all sorts of muck and grease and old grease down there. You can see there's the bearing here as I'm moving it around. Let's see. And I'm getting behind the bearing like this. 
and then I'm just putting the screwdriver there and just lightly tapping. And I'm just going to work that bearing off, or that seal off. And I'm not hitting hard because I don't want to damage the, the seal. And you'll see as I'm starting to do it, that seal is starting to break free. You can see it's coming up just a little bit there as I work my way around. Just like that. You can see both the seal and the bearing popped out. There is the bearing and you can see that grease is really yucky and not pretty at all. And there's the seal that holds all the grease in on the back side. So this is where the job starts to get really messy is getting these things all cleaned up. Because grease just sticks everywhere. You know, so the job itself is not hard, it's just messy. You want to get all the old grease and muck out of there as possible. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to now hit it with brake cleaner. This stuff works great for cleaning stuff. This is just stuff I got at O'Reilly's, obviously, for... Uh, 250 a can. This is very toxic stuff. Wearing eye protection is probably a good idea because you don't want this stuff to splash up in your eyes. Clean uh, all the other stuff up as well. This is the washer. And one thing you'll note on the seal, you do have to be a little more careful with this. You want to check this seal really closely because there is a rubber. Uh, component to the seal right here that helps uh, keep the grease in on the back side. And so you want to check that, you want to inspect it really closely, clean it really good, um, and make sure there's no cracking or anything like that. And if there is, replace it. Generally it's a good idea to go ahead and replace these whenever you do the uh, wheel bearing job. And I don't use brake cleaner on this rubber seal because I don't want it to eat away that rubber seal. I'm reusing them because I wanted to. I went to buy new rubber seal or new rear seals at the auto parts store, and they didn't have any in stock. So I'm, I need to reuse these because I'm leaving in a couple of days, and it was going to take them a few days to get uh, replacements. So I want to make sure I'm protecting these things as best I can. So next, we're going to clean up the hub. And again, we're going to just try and get as much of the grease and grime out of here as possible. And then we'll take a closer look at the inside of the hub so you can see what that looks like. Once again, we're going to... I'm just feeling around in there to make sure I got all the grease and stuff out. Now let's take a closer look at what's going on here because we're going to want to inspect the surface of this as well. There's two spots where the bearings ride. And so if you can see right here, it's a nice smooth surface. That's where the backside bearing rides. And then once again, there's another nice machine surface there where the front side bearing rides. 
and then behind there you can feel there's a little ridge that kind of acts as a little bit of a grease reservoir and then the same back here on the back side there's a little uh, uh, channel right back here behind this surface um, that uh, can actually hold us hold a little bit of grease and stuff as well when you repack these things so um, the way this thing goes together is there's your backside bearing that basically sits right in there like that and then uh, the axle feeds through there and rides on that bearing your rear seal gets pressed in here like that to hold uh, the grease in and then on the front side your smaller bearing rides in there just like that and does the same thing and then the washer and then the castle nut so that's how the the hub assembly all goes together so now I'm gonna go rinse these things off real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm just gonna rinse them off with water, dry them off, and make sure that uh, I got all the residue and stuff off there from the brake cleaner, and dry it off just so I don't have any moisture, and then we'll uh, start repacking it. Okay, with everything cleaned and uh, rinsed off and all that kind of stuff, I can inspect these bearings closely, look for any sort of wear marks. I can look for any sort of loose fitting and stuff to make sure everything's snug that everything's uh, spinning freely without any issue. And this bearing looks pretty good. I got a little bit of discoloration on the inside of these bearings, but I think it's okay. It feels like it's spinning good. Everything's kind of snug and fitting together. And so uh, the uh, the retainer, so this is a metal retainer here. And that's, uh, that's, that's fitting together pretty well as well. So that looks pretty good. As I said, I've already inspected the rear seal. It looks pretty good. And the hub surfaces and everything look pretty good. So this is ready to start repacking. So let's, let's start on that now. Now, I'm just using uh, some high temp uh, wheel bearing grease. Um, this is the red stuff. It comes in, like I said, different colors. And so when we first when we start to repack, um, what we're going to try and do is going to force grease up into this channel right here. Um, and if we're successful, it, we may or may not see it here, but generally what happens is you'll start to see it come out uh, the sides of the thing, uh, the sides of the bearing uh, around the retainer. So um, that's what we're going to do there. So to do that, basically we put some on our hand. that and then we just try and force it in there like that and you can see it's kind of going in there we get a little bit on the inside there but we're just going to work our way around so to see it to start to come out right in there a little bit. And then we kind of work it in. Try and squeeze it in from the top side too. As well as just kind of work it all the way around. You really want the grease to get inside this channel. That's that's the critical piece. And this is the backside bearing. And then we're going to go ahead and fill up the backside bearing as well. Get some into that channel.
good amount of grease in there because you got essentially metal on metal going on. So I got a good uh, amount of coating inside my bearing. Now I can drop this in. It's going to sit right there. I'll clean my hands up here real quick. And then we're going to pack some more grease on top and then we'll put the rear seal on. And so now I'm going to just press this into place. And this is where the board comes in handy. Okay, so I want this to go in nice and even. So if I were to just tap around it, like I were a paint can or something, I'm not putting even pressure driving it down. So that's where I use a board. It allows me to get it even pressure all the way in and just tap it in. And it doesn't take much to get it in there. And now we're packed on the, on the rear side. Okay, now for the front side, we're just going to re repeat that same process. Again, we're going to try and force it into the, into the bearing. Just keep working at it until you get all the way around. You got it nice and packed. And then we're going to pack the hub as well. And that little channel behind the, the ridge where the bearing sits. Finish off the rest of this. Drop that in. We're going to clean up the axle now and get it ready to put the hub assembly back together. Okay, so you can see the axle's got a bunch of grime and stuff on it as well. So we want to clean that all up. Clean out all where the cotter pin goes as well. Clean up the threads. And you're going to want to inspect that axle as well to make sure that there's no pitting or anything like that that causes the bearings to go out. Because the bearings are going to ride right here and right here. That seems like it's in pretty good shape. So now we can start putting it all back together. And so now we just start uh, putting it back on. You want to hold that front bearing in when you... Push the hub back on. There we go. Just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to clear the threads a little bit here. But I'm going to pack more grease back in. On that front side, and then I'll put the washer on. You're going to see a bunch of grease squeeze out as I put the washer in. I personally just like a lot of grease in there. Others may argue differently. But this has worked for me for 40 odd years of doing it this way. You can see I got a flat spot on my washer to, that coincides with the uh, axle those threads up a little bit just so I can see where that cotter pin's going. That grab my castle nut. Now a lot of people say don't use don't reuse the castle nut. I don't have a choice because I don't have any other I don't have I didn't get a replacement. So I'm going to spin that on. And basically, you torque these things down. If you got a torque wrench, 15, no more than 20 pounds, 20 foot pounds. I'm just doing this finger tight because I don't have a torque wrench here. And then I'm going to go just tight enough so that I can get the cotter pin in. And that's, that's all I'm going to do here. 
just going to use my screwdriver just until I see that hole for cotton. Now I can feed my cotter pin through, just like that, and spread the legs on it with the pliers. Just wrap it around like that. Just like that. And we're ready to put the grease cap back on. This is a little dirty as well, so I'm just going to get this cleaned up. Get all the old grease. Now this is in, you know, this is just black molly grease. That's not dirt or anything. That's just the color of that grease. And then it's up to you if you want to throw any grease in there or not. Um, there's quite a bit of grease in there already. I'll just throw a little dab. And then we're just going to tap that on. And we're done. Now I just got to put it all back together, put the wheel back on, torque the wheels uh, down to 100, 120 foot-pounds or whatever. You know, it's like putting a tire on. Um, in fact, it is putting a tire on. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to repacking the wheel bearings on this trailer. Uh, I do need to do my uh, teardrop trailer, my camp in as well. That one has brakes on it, so it's almost identical process a little bit things things are just a little bit different because you're dealing with the brake drum but it's it's uh, it's a very similar sort of thing you got a backside seal you got a front side bearing backside bearing the whole bit so if you can do something like this you could do something like that just as well uh, it's really not that different but uh, there you go if you got any questions or comments um, you know love to hear them please provide the comments below and uh, you know if you got any tips, tricks, please share that as well. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys and let me know what you think. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and stopping by and checking out the channel. Please consider subscribing. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That always helps uh, helps out uh, guys like creators like myself. So um, thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching.